Have you always lived in Cobb County? No. Where did you, how did you end up here? Um, for work. Oh, okay. I worked for the U.S. Forest Service as an endangered species specialist. And I oh, worked okay. in a regional office, which is in Atlanta, and this area had good schools, and I had kids still at home, so we moved here. Gotcha. Where did you move from? Uh, Tennessee. Did you live in Tennessee your whole life? Oh, no. No, I started out in Michigan. Oh, okay. And then West Virginia, and then back to Michigan, then to Ohio, then to South Carolina, then to Tennessee, and now here. Oh, wow. So, like, pretty much all down the East Coast a mm-hmm. bit. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I did something similar, too. I think I was I was born in Connecticut, and then we went down to North Carolina and South Carolina and then Georgia, so just, like, down three consecutive states till I got here. But, yeah, um, was there any particular reason that your family moved to Cobb County specifically? Uh, schools. Just the schools? Okay. Well, that, and at the time we moved here, this, it wasn't developed. Oh, okay. I mean, the closest grocery store was the Kroger at Butler Creek. There was nothing at the intersection of Mars Hill Road and mm-hmm. Stylesboro. I used to be able to drive past cows every day when I went to work. So. Was that something you liked? Oh, absolutely. Just yeah. like the scenery well, kind of thing? Yeah. Well, that's why we bought this house, because it backs up to 20 acres of woods. Gotcha. So it's not like that anymore? No, oh, the woods are still here, but the, you know, we've seen what Cobb County looks like. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wasn't sure about this particular area, because I have I don't live around. I live like 10 or 15 minutes away from here. It's a bit of traffic today at this time, at least. There's but, always yeah. traffic this time. Yeah. Time. So, um, um, do you own this house? Yes. Okay, cool. And... What, when would you say approximately you moved to Cobb County? Cobb County. Okay, 1991. Okay, cool. And was that, where did, did you always live in this house when you were in Cobb County? Nope, I lived around the corner in another house. Okay. So when did you move into the current house? 2004. Okay. Gotcha. That's interesting that your job kind of relates to environmental though so now you'll maybe have an interesting perspective for this i don't know we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. i mean we write an article in the neighborhood quarterly newsletter and the last one we wrote on was climate change okay because we were in alaska and it was 84 degrees in juneau so that should have been in the 60s so yeah gotcha okay well let's start talking about the solar adoption part of the interview then so do you have rooftop solar for your home no can you tell me a little bit about um, why you decided not to? Was it a conscious decision? Oh, absolutely. Okay. If I didn't have shade on the house, I'd have solar panels on the roof. Oh, gotcha. But I'm not going to cut the shade down because then I lose all the cooling for the bulk of the year. I mean, That's I probably true. have four hours of sun from like 10 to 2 when there's no shade on the roof. And gotcha. I'm not cutting my trees down just to put on solar panels that probably cost me more than I'm saving in air conditioning. Mm-hmm. Was there any other factors involved in uh, your decision not to get solar? No. Just the... The fact that I wasn't going to get rid of my trees to do it. Yeah, gotcha. So the location wasn't great, great and that there was a lot of shade and you mm-hmm. didn't, weren't, didn't want to cut down your trees no. for that, which makes well, sense. Well, I didn't want to fight with the homeowners association either because they probably only let, let me put them on the back of the house. Oh, Yeah. That's true. And the way the layout of the roof is, it's got four sides. So I'm going to have three sides that I can't utilize. So. Gotcha. Uh, would you say that uh, if you have had the option then, would you put rooftop solar on your home? If it didn't have shade. If I didn't have to lose my shade to do it, I would, yeah. Okay. And tell me why you would or would not want solar on your rooftop. Oh, if I could, I'd, it's going to save me money. Mm-hmm. It save, saves the planet. I mean, we're not putting carbon into the atmosphere every time you turn on the thermostat. Um, and that's a biggie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't take a rock to get science, scientists to look around and see what's happening to the planet. So, um, Would you say that there were, would be any reasons that you wouldn't want solar if it was ideal for you to have it? No, I can't think of any. Okay. Do you think that there are any um, non-economic reasons that... Um, you or someone else that you know would want solar? Oh, I know somebody in, Ar- in Arkansas that has a farm that's got a huge solar array, and he's making money selling the electricity back to the, to the grid, so gotcha. I just don't have the space. Mm-hmm. And um, so, no, that doesn't make sense. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. 
Would you call yourself an environmentally conscious person? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so... Actually, before this, I want to just ask you, how would you describe your relationship with the environment? I think you must have an interesting perspective. Um, yeah. You asked the, the question about church. I go outside mm-hmm. if I want to connect with my God, because I don't need four walls and somebody telling me what to think. So I'm linked to the environment. And we make conscious decisions and what we do with the effect on the environment. Um, this past year, we had... For our New Year's resolution was no single-use plastic bags. And there are days where I've literally had to put the groceries back into the cart, put them in my car, because I didn't have a reusable bag and I refused to take plastic. Mm-hmm. And then I was getting upset that the produce plastic. So now we bought probably 30 mesh reusable produce bags. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to decrease the carbon footprint from or the plastic footprint as well as carbon we just an air conditioning unit died so we had to replace it so we replaced that one with we replaced the 30 year old unit that wasn't dead because it wasn't energy efficient so gotcha and i noticed you said we so are you referring to your family or your wife or yes yes, yes. all everyone so oh, absolutely is your whole family then would you say environmentally conscious as they a better whole be, I'll kill them. Uh, <laughs> yes yeah we are okay gotcha cool no yeah, it's no, we don't use any pesticides, and that's why our yard is a lawn full of weeds. We just fertilize the weeds, don't use any pesticides, and keep it mowed. And then the homeowners association does complain because it's green. Oh, okay, so. that's interesting. Okay. And you said before the homeowners association would stop you from having solar panels. You think on the front? Visible, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you think it would be okay on the back? Yeah. I mean, they wouldn't let me put... I'm going to put an addition on the back of the house, and they won't let me put a pod in the driveway. Oh, really? Yeah. So I had to run a storage unit to store the things that are in the back of the house that we're going to... That's going to be gone in a few weeks. So... Gotcha. It, it's, yeah, so they, I get letters all the time from the yard police because I've got weeds in the yard. And I think they backed off on the weeds in the grass because two years ago, I said I needed to kill my weeds, so I did. So then I basically had almost no lawn. Mm-hmm. So then I told my homes to plant all the flowers. And they didn't want that either because they don't like flowers. And because it's not neat. Everything is, it's not like, every, you've got all those little meatball hedges. You know, native, a native wildflower garden isn't neat. Um, so once I told them that, then they stopped complaining about my weeds. Gotcha. So, Do you think homeowners associations are a large barrier to things like solar or other things that could be helping they they are but i also think they're necessary because there's no telling without them i mean you look at this neighborhood and it's 30 years old and it looks pretty really good for a 30 year old neighborhood Mm -hmm. um you know without the homeowners association no telling what we would have so yes they can be a pain in the ass but i think there's value okay Gotcha. So, um, I'd like to talk a bit about the rooftop solar adoption in general. So, we're going to start doing the maps. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a pen. And on there, I just want you to label for me um, where you think people have the most rooftop solar energy on their homes. And if you could draw that for me, label it however you want. You can uh, label it with... um, like words, and you can also like circle or do whatever you want to label regions. Okay. So I can just come through Southern California, Southern Arizona, yeah, New yeah. Mexico. All right, we can do that. Get to Texas, and where's Austin? Probably Austin because that's a blue spot. Portland, probably Seattle. I'm trying to think of environmentally conscious places. Where have I seen solar? Asheville. There's probably plenty of solar in Florida. I'll just write down all of Florida. I'm guessing there's probably there's I know that I know there's initiative around Atlanta to try to get solar installed. When somebody was gonna put a big solar array in South Georgia because they were asking about 
that's in solar panels. But I don't remember where I was going. Somewhere down there. Who was asking? Some developer of a solar. Oh, okay. For a solar company. Interesting. Yeah. Um, no. Denver. You're pretty environmentally conscious. Boise. Then we're getting too far cold. And, although we get a lot of... Actually, we just spent... I don't know if people would invest in solar in Alaska. You got 24 hours of sunlight. Where's Anchorage? I'll just take a guess that maybe somebody in Anchorage would do solar. Just because we're up there and it never got dark. Uh, I'm through guessing. Okay. So, if you could walk me through some of your reasoning for why you chose the places you did. Well, a lot of sun. In Southern California. Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, and then and Florida. The rest of these places, because they have the tendency to be more progressive, um, environmentally friendly communities, Seattle, Portland, Boise, Denver, Asheville, Austin, Texas. And I know that the city of Atlanta is trying to push a solar initiative. Okay. Was there a reason? That's interesting because I don't think anyone's done that so far. Was there a reason you just chose the Southern California instead of like the rest of California? Just more sun. Okay. More more population center. Okay. I suppose I could put Sacramento in there, but yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so um, what do you think makes um, those communities that you labeled so different from uh, people in Cobb County? Um, they're more environment, you know, specifically not, not Florida in the southern tier of Arizona, New Mexico, and California, but the specific communities are more progressive, more liberal, more environmentally conscious, and, and Cobb County just doesn't have a conscious okay. <laughs> when it comes to the environment. Gotcha. Um, okay. You have anything more to say on the matter? No, I mean I was just trying to make an ed- educated guess of, of mm-hmm. where, what what do I view as progressive communities, and mm-hmm. those are the progressive communities that I can can think of. Gotcha. And you also lived a lot along the East Coast, correct? Um, just South Carolina. Oh, really? I lived on the coast of South Carolina. It was Mich- Southern Michigan, Southern Ohio, oh, that's West right. Virginia. Northeast Tennessee. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, so like in those in the places that you lived along there, did you notice more solar or different mindsets of people versus where we live now? Oh yeah, coal, coal. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because these are coal states, so mm-hmm. you no know, no one was talking solar, no one was talking wind. Um, and when I lived in South Carolina, there wasn't a that was 1985 to 88, 89, and solar wasn't even a thought at that point. Gotcha. Do you think um, people had... Uh, I forgot what I was going to ask. <laughs> it's okay. You'll come back. I'm just going to ask something different That's right fine. now. It'll, it'll um, pop back in your head. Why do you think, like... It's gone. <laughs> Do you think the people in the places that you labeled have a different mindset than the people in Cobb County, like, towards solar, specifically? Oh, I think so. I mean, you've got, you know, a whole lot of sun. And, you know, the southern tier states, a whole lot of sun um, for a long period of time. You don't get a lot of cloudy days. Um yeah, so that's, you know, if you think about, well, it's not just Denver, you know, it's this whole area, Denver, Vail, Aspen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're, they're tied to the environment. And, and Cobb County is tied to their cars. So, I mean, it's, I think there's a completely different mindset in these areas that I've circled. Um, 
than Cobb County when it comes to the environment. They're just more environmentally progressive. Well, they're progressive all the way around, general, yeah. and, and, and politically as well. That's why I only circled Boston. You're not going to find, I don't think you're going to find a bunch of solar panels on some rancher's house in, in Texas. Mm-hmm. Now, you may find a whole bunch of uh, wind turbines, because there's a lot of wind energy development in Texas, mm-hmm. um, all through here. You know, All through these, the heartland states, there's a lot of wind energy development, but I don't think there's a whole lot of solar. Okay. Just because it's not... I just needed don't, there. Well, I don't think that this, there's much mindset about solar there. Okay. I could be totally wrong. Yeah, yeah. I probably am. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Are you done labeling that map? I am. Okay. <laughs> we will move on then to uh, the more specific map of Georgia. Okay. So... Um, it's the same exercise pretty much, so you'll just be labeling where you think people have the most, uh, so rooftop solar adoption in the state of Georgia. Whether or not it be true, okay, <laughs> where well, you would perceive there to be more. I would perceive there would be plenty in Athens, it's a progressive community. Probably Savannah. I've already said it. Atlanta, Sandy Springs, Roswell. I would not want Marriott in there. I doubt Megan. Oh, where's Milton? It's not the Roswell. I'll just move the circle up a little bit. Pick up Alpharetta and Milton. They seem to be more environmentally aware. And they're also wealthier and they can afford to put solar panels. The only reason I circled that line is that I know that the city, the Office of Sustainability has been looking at trying to figure out how do we get solar in mm-hmm. the city. And I don't think there's a lot of solar scattered around. Well, wait a minute. I bet. Where's Fort Benning? It's just south of Columbus. The army might have solar. That's an interesting thought. What was your reasoning for that? Uh, because they just seem to be looking at opportunities to save money. Okay. Um, and then Fort Stewart is over here near Savannah. Robbins Air Force Base it's south of Macon. I don't know why I thought that. It's just... It seems like something that the military would do because, for one thing, it could be a training exercise. You're out in the middle of the desert. You need to generate electricity. How are you going to do it? You bring a solar array array with you. Mm -hmm. Um, So they could actually use it as a training-type exercise for their soldiers that are solar technicians. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, if we're deployed to the middle of the desert somewhere and you're either burning fuel and having generators... Or you throw up a solar array. I saw you finished labeling that. I am. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah. could you walk me through some of your reasoning for... I know you've spoken about the military bases, but for everything else that you labeled... Well, Athens is a very progressive town. Um, and you know the people there, I, I believe, are very strongly tied to the environment. Um, Savannah... Same thing. It seems a more more of a progressive town. Um, then you're along the coast. You probably got a lot more sun. Um, and then again, Atlanta. I know that the city's looking for ways to, to get a solar initiative started. And then it just, you know, you've got this band of wealth through Sandy Springs, Roswell, Alpharetta, and Milton, where people could actually afford. To put solar arrays on their house. Okay. And uh, what? And makes... I did not include Marietta because they just seem just like they don't care. Okay, cool. That's, That's... what I was about to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so more. And I don't want to turn this discussion political, but no, it's okay. It's whatever, whatever you feel when like. When you got the about. heart of the Republican Party, they don't really give a shit about the environment, and they'll just soon burn more coal. Mm-hmm. burn more natural gas to get their house down to 68 degrees um, and Marietta doesn't strike me as having 
much concerned about the environment at all. Okay. So more, a little bit more Even broadly. Even though there's money there, I don't think the people there. Okay. More broadly than Marietta, like the whole of Cobb County, then what makes the people from Cobb County different from the other places that you labeled that you thought would have more adoption? Well, Cobb County's not progressive at all. Okay. They don't care about the environment. Um, I'm not sure Cobb County cares much about anything. Just look at all the new development that's going in and packing more and more people in and changing the the um, zoning so they can pack more people. And they haven't found a development that they don't like. So That's interesting. Okay. And when we spend all that money to build a Brave Stadium, there's not a solar panel on it. Um, it would be interesting to see if they put solar panels on that 420-foot tall elevator shaft they're going to build up mm-hmm. by the stadium. I don't know. They might because it's a German company. If it was an American company, I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> Okay, so um, what about some people that you might know in, within the state of Georgia or some of your close friends? Do you know anyone who has solar on their roofs? Um, I know Laura Turner Seidel. She's got oh, solar really? on her house. Okay. Yeah, it, it's actually, it, um, she refers to her house as Eco Manor. So every, everything is um, energy friendly. Wow, that's cool. So, yeah. Why do you think that she wanted that done? Like that, uh, because why she's a she big not? advocate for the environment okay. and for conservation. Do you know if she had other reasons as well? She's Ted Turner's daughter. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, she, she is Ted Turner's daughter. She can afford to do it. Um, I don't, they, I'm certain they didn't do it to save money. They don't have to worry about money. But it, it, she believes in environmental protection, and this is her way of making a statement. If you look at um, Google Maps with satellite image, you can see the whole, I mean, her entire roof is all solar. Oh, wow. Her entire roof, mm-hmm. not even just like wow. Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay, that's really cool. Interesting. Um, oh, I, the office I work in in Atlanta's got a roof of solar panels. Does she live in Cobb or does no, she? No, she lives in Fulton. She lives in Atlanta. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, in Cobb, I don't know anybody that has solar panels. Yeah. Um, why do you think um, everyone else doesn't, or like the people that you know who don't have solar power on their roofs? Why do you think that they don't have it? They probably don't think it's cost effective. You know, how, how long does, does it take? You know, if it costs you $20,000 to put a solar array on your house to generate enough electricity, how long does it take you to gain it back? Mm-hmm. And as transient as a lot of people are, they may not be willing to put that investment to move because somebody else may look at a solar as, as a liability when they come to, to buy a house. So, mm-hmm. And then it could be part of it. It's just the... the uh, transitory nature of a lot of the people in Cobb County. They come to Cobb County for work, they get promoted, and they leave Cobb County. Um, Gotcha. Why don't we have solar arrays in all the the schools in the county? mm -hmm. Because the county doesn't believe in in solar. Yeah. Is it then, you think, uh, commitment is part of it then? They don't want to put that commitment into... They don't want to put the cash out. Okay. I don't think most people take the time to figure out or even think about what the cost is going to be per kilowatt of electricity and what's it going to cost and how many kilowatts to their house. And I just don't think people want to do the work. Okay. Uh, maybe if there was some little form on the internet and you look at it and say, okay, my house is this big. I need this much. So this is my energy demand from you know, gadget bills to tell you how many kilowatts you're using. And this is what it's going to cost. Mm-hmm. I mean, if people could look at it and not do any homework, they might be more willing to at least think mm-hmm. right now it's just too much work if it wasn't for spending money like or thinking having to think about money what do you think some of the non-economic barriers would be for some people here then to get solar for their roofs non-economic barriers well I guess so there's people like me that have trees and they realize that trees provide an energy benefit you know, that would be one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, no, somebody's going to somebody's going to give me solar panels. I put them on the roof and just use them to get my four hours of sun. But I don't know what would be keeping precluding people from putting solar on their roof. Yeah, other than it, the, other than the money. Yeah, and the commitment and the work, I guess that they'd have the efforts that they'd put in. 
to you, figure it out. You mm-hmm. know, if somebody just said, "Here's what you need, and here's what the cost is," you don't have to do anything. And they say, "Well, I can't afford it," or they say, "Okay," and it's going to save you this much money, you know, on on an annual basis or whatever. Oh. Barley. <laughs> Do you think, um... If the dog's bugging, you just tell him. Tell it's him. all good. Barley, get over here. Bar fly. Just sit. Is there, um... Do you think there's a barrier with education or lack of knowledge? Because I've heard a lot of people say that, actually. Like, people just don't know. No, I'm, I'm sure people don't know. I mean, they don't know about solar. They don't know about wind. Um... They know about coal and know about natural gas, and they certainly aren't teaching about renewable energy in school. Um, maybe maybe they are in Colorado or Asheville or Denver, but mm-hmm. they're certainly not in Cobb County. Okay. Hell, they had to put special stickers in the biology books, you know, years ago. Do you think people are resistant to change here? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yes, absolutely. They need to change. <laughs> Do you That's know why they don't like my my garden? Yeah, because it doesn't look manicured. Well, wildflower gardens don't look manicured, so yes, they're resistant to change. They want my grass to look like everybody else's grass and be weed free and pesticide and pest free, and you know, mm-hmm. we we can't figure out why people put things on their lawn that's so toxic. You have to have signs on it for three days to keep the dogs and the kids off of it. Yeah. It's true. So, no. Yeah, Cobb County is just stubborn, backward. Do you know anyone from Georgia who has, like, particular opinions about solar and, like, specifically? Well, Laura Turner Seidel would because you know, mm-hmm. she's a big proponent of, of energy conservation and she's her whole roof is solar. Right. Um, other than that, I don't know anybody else that has solar panels. But do you know anyone else who ha- would have opinions on solar panels? Oh. Like, even negative opinions about solar panel- panels? I'm sure some of my coworkers would have opinions. Okay. Well, yeah. But they don't live in Cobb County. Oh, okay. Actually, well, no, they're actually one of them does. You need more. What? You need more people to survey in Cobb County? <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah. Yeah, I can think of a few people. Okay, cool. Yeah. And they would probably glad to help if you know someone reached out to them. Okay. Well, that's pretty much the interviews.